I'm gonna knock this right again. <laughs> Come on with it. Woo. Come on with it. Woo. Come on with it. Bacon in the morning. Bacon in the morning. Bacon in the evening. What the hell are those? Why do you even own shorts like that? <laughs> he doesn't. This is a chair. I just wanted to know what it feels like to be pretty. <laughs> Why do we hang out with this guy, man? Oh, man. Who invited Marty? Yeah, no. Skirt. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Come on, get yourself. Bacon fat and hash browns. Bacon fat and hash browns. The boat is completely vegan and fat free. Even our potatoes have meat juice on them. Look at that. Not your first rodeo. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> yep, yep. Gonna need our energy today, huh? Mm hmm. Especially in that wind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially in that wind. <laughs> oh, we got the healthy version too. Oh, yeah. For the vegans. For the vegans. Oh, that's gonna be good, mate. Oh, oh, I've got yeah. a cup, Eddie. I'll grab a cup. Oh, that's all right, I got me get another one. Yeah. I'll bring you a cup. Yeah, we'll I'll grab it. Thank you. Mm. Aaron. No. Oh. That's all good? Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, man. Yeah. Good. Good. Amazing. Help you break it. Oh yeah, how oh, sexual. Mm. Steven's so proper with the fork and knife. <laughs> All right, so while we're stuck here in port, hiding from the wind, we're gonna do a little kayak fishing around these muscle farms, see what we can get into. All right, so we were supposed to head to the Mokohinau Islands today, but as fate would have it, the wind forecast changed and it is ripping outside offshore right now. 30, 35 knot winds. So instead, change of plans and we're gonna fish the mussel farms today. So these mussel farms are obviously full of mussels, which bait like to eat. And if there's bait around, there are predators around. And the guys tell us we are going to hook some big yellowtail today, some big snapper today. The problem is these mussel farms are basically underwater pilings that go straight up where mussels grow all along the sides. And so it's nothing but crazy structure. There's ropes and buoys and poles in the water. So hooking these fish is the easy part. It's landing these fish, they tell me, can be damn near impossible at times. So I've got a heavy setup and today live bait is kind of the jam. They're telling me that, that live bait around these mussel farms are way more productive than plastics. Plastics can work, so I got a few tied on, but we're gonna start off with some live bait that we caught last night. See if we can't rip up some monsters right here outside of the port. And then tomorrow we're gonna head to the Mokes as the wind chills out. It's gonna be a little bit of a rough crossing, he said, but once we get there, it should be pretty prime. And Aaron, Skipper Aaron, just what a legend. He uh, last night basically said that since we're having to burn a day today, He's gonna add an extra day on the end of our trip for free. So we all double checked our flights. We'll all make it back in time. So it's gonna be no problem. So instead of seven days out here, we're gonna do eight. So yeah, let's see if we can get into in these muscle farms. It's kind of a unique, a uh, little something different than we did last year. And I'm all about trying new techniques, trying new uh, ways of fishing. So yeah, this could be pretty fun. Not quite the wild and remote area that the Mokes is, but if there's big fish here. I'm all about it. Ivy let me borrow his bait tube. He's taking the morning off, getting some stuff done on the boat. So, got about six liveys in here and they tell me I'm gonna be losing them. But I brought a live bait rig that I used back in Panama. Got a seven knot, I think they're called stickies or something like that, circle hook. I got it from Carl's Bait and Tackle, where I get most of my tackle. If you guys wanna get 30% off all of your tackle, you can join Carl's Club and shop at Carl's Bait and Tackle and literally get 30% off everything you, you already buy. It's the biggest no-brainer on the planet, and that's what I do. So I got these circle hooks at a discount, and I've got 80-pound braid and a 100-pound leader, and basically my strategy is gonna be drag these liveys along these ropes and buoys, and then when you hook up, I'm gonna basically try to lock this down, hope that the line holds up, and pedal as far away from those buoys and ropes and pilings as possible. It's gonna be kind of balls to the wall, full sunset as they say here, full drag, trying to rip these fish out from all this structure. Grab one of these guys. Oh, 
one right through the nose on this guy. And that's what we're looking for right there. And we're basically just gonna kind of slow troll these guys along these ropes and try not to get owned, essentially. We will see what happens. Got some fish on the graph, that might be snapper, which could also eat these live baits. Oh, oh, bunch of fish right there. There's something down there. Bunch of somethings down there. Getting a run, getting a run, getting a run. Full sunset. Oh, did he drop it? Ah, oh, he dropped it. I thought I wanted to let these guys eat, let them run with it, but maybe not. I had no pressure on, no drag. I don't know why he would drop it. Oh, he didn't drop it. He just stole it. Well, that's a good sign though. I had a good feeling I had a bunch of marks right there in that spot. My first pass, so I came back and I hang, hung off it, hoping to kind of get my line right above where I was marking all those fish. And sure enough, I've got to run maybe about two minutes after getting there. We ripped the bait off. I'm gonna go through the next one, through the top of the mouth instead of uh, through the nose like that. Let's try this again. All right, so the wind uh, kind of shifted direction a little bit and now it's ripping right down this pass. So uh, the captain, Aaron, Skipper's gonna run around this corner. It looks like it'll be protected over there and there's another muscle farm over there. So, um, I mean, the wind's... The wind's not terrible, but it's, it's just kind of hard to maintain position. It's wet. Uh, you guys aren't gonna be able to hear me very well. So I'm just gonna basically let the wind drift me uh, towards this kind of protected corner. We're gonna go around the corner and it should be better over there. But I got a bait out, might as well just, just drift the whole way. Let's see what happens. Getting a run, getting a run. Yep, I'm getting a run, getting a run, big run. Yep, fish on. Fish on. It's running out. Yep, yep, yep. Fish on, fish on. What I just say, two minutes after I said I might as well drip the bait. There we go. A little New Zealand sleigh ride, baby. Yep, I'm on a good one outside this first muscle farm. Second live bait I put out, I'm, both of them got hit. It's a good sign for the rest of the trip. I don't know if this is a kingy. Could be a small kingfish. Some of these thumps actually kind of felt like a shark, which is a possibility. I got a hundred pound fluoro leader, so it wouldn't necessarily bite me off right away, but it's not going to the muscle farms. Is why I'm thinking it might not be a yellow. They told me these they told me these kingies would go straight for the for the farms. Yeah, I'm on something, man. I'm not sure, dude. It could even be a shark. It did not head towards the farms, it headed out into open water. But I got it below the boat, I'm getting close. <sighs> Let's see what we got. Don't have color yet. It made a pretty smoking run and I had it in free spool to start. Kind of caught me with my pants down. I was grabbing a snack <laughs> and it took off. Oh, I got color. It's a shark. Uh, looks like a bronze whaler shark. Yep. Oh no, it's a hammerhead. Hammerhead. Yeah, I got a hammerhead at the boat, guys. Hammerhead, some kind of hammerhead. Is that you, Rob? Did a hammer? Nah, man, I'm good. I'm good. It's just, it's not a big hammerhead. Probably five feet. Yeah, baby hammerhead. Hopefully, this doesn't go bad. Let's see. We can get this out. 
Maybe easier said than done. I'm gonna back off the drag some and thumb it. Basically by doing that, I can get leverage on it with my thumb, but then if she takes off last second, it's not gonna flip my boat. Beautiful little shark. We're gonna try to get this out of her. If we can, she'll let me. Yeah, we'll get that hook for sure. This wind is not making this easier. Come here, girl. Let me get that out of you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. I know it doesn't feel like it, but I'm here to help you right now. Uh, come on. Just need to get a hold of that hook. Oh, oh, watch the dentures. Come on, sit still. Come on. she went and my lines all twisted up from her writhing next to the boat but oh, I did not want to leave that in there oh my gosh that was a workout got my leader back though my hook back she should be fine and uh, this little freight I'll have to retie this but uh, not the target species but fun little excitement here in the morning I'm gonna go around this corner get out of this wind it's getting a little annoying now Lord have mercy. That was a workout. I mean, gosh, the fight was pretty easy, but getting that hook out of it was not. This place just looks so wild and remote. It's beautiful. Last year we did a little hike up to a waterfall and got to see the landscape. Just beautiful country out here. And in here, protected from the wind. Not a bad little place to have a little pedal. I think I might give up on the live bait for right now. I'm not marking any kingfish in here. I might switch over to plastics, try to get a redemption on these snapper. So this little guy right here is actually a species of penguin. Did not know New Zealand had penguins. I can't catch the little guy for a closer shot. They're fast. They go underwater and he pops up 100 feet away in like six seconds. Can't catch up to him. Pretty cool, they make a pretty little distinct sound. Sounds like a little honk. It's like he's trying to find his buddy. I just heard one uh, kind of reply to him. Cute little guys. See if I can get a better shot for you guys later. About to be some Snapple candy. All right, Brooks is on now. Just came over here to this calm side I was talking about after releasing that hammerhead. And Brooks is on one, I think on soft plastic or on the chatterbait. A bunch of snapper around these things too, you can catch on artificials. Nice. Yep, yep. So Brooks with a nice snapper on the Z-Man. That snapper threw up a bunch of like muscle looking stuff. Like this is what they're down there crunching on. It's crazy that they can eat that, you know? Yeah, I mean you see their teeth and besides the sharp ones up front, they've got crushers almost like a like a sheep head. Yeah. Nice, Marty's on. Everyone's hooking up on the plastic, so I just switched over, forget the live bait. Gonna quit trying to force something that's just not really, not really working right now. So it's not a huge fish, but hooking fish on plastics 100 feet down, never a bad time. I found a jig head, seven inch gulp. This little guy. So good fun. Yeah, nice. Woohoo! Nice, mate. Nicely done. Beauty. Yippah! Ha, 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 ha.
Yeah, Marty's on again. He just missed it. And then uh, we were sitting here talking about strategy. He missed one hit and it came right back for it. Thumped him again. He's on now. Man, hooking up left and right right now. Marty with another one. Nice one. A little bit nicer, looks like. There she is. Beauty. Dude, good one, man. You can tell their head starts to change shape. You know, they stop getting so rounded and start getting that hump. Wardrobe change mid fight. Look at this guy. Looks like a good one, man. They're strong fish, man. Every time they come up, I'm like, what? That's it? Nice. Another nice one for Brooksy. This is definitely going to more your style of fishing, man, and it's obvious. You're, you're killing it. Appreciate it. I know. You got it. Yeah, I don't think it's real big. Fish up. It's not real big, but it's not tiny either. Uh, yeah. Ew. Nice. I think that was my maybe second or third cast with the plastic it's a lesson i've learned many times i was really set on getting some yellowtail kingfish action on the live bait but it was not working instead of trying to force something that's not there just switch to switch to the pattern that was working for the other guys and here we go i see him i don't have a net it looks decent yeah man he's not bad Not bad at all. Don't have a net, this is a little dicey. Please don't. Yeah, nice. That's on the Z-Man also. Got a little willow blade on it, nice little Z-Man. Beautiful fish. Look at that guy. No second drop with the plastic today. <laughs> Not too shabby. All right, cheers, you old bloke. I caught a snapper! Woo! That was at least 25, right? If you got like a ball, you can, I could break balls of oysters off and just have balls of oysters, but then they're really hard to break because they're so sharp. I find it's better to like be able to steady yourself against the rock and be able to like pry off. Yeah, yeah. If you just got a ball of oysters, you're trying to, it's, it's really hard. So I find this. Like the most effective way to do it. You like touch it just gently with your finger. Don't run it fast, but just touch it. It's like, oh, yeah. See what I mean? So, that there, if, if I didn't wear gloves, I would have slipped and I would have sliced my hand completely over there. And for the amount of like yield you get on them, there's not a lot of return. Like, it's more, it's definitely a delicacy. You just cut right there? Yeah, you just cut that foot, the muscle. For the perfectly good oyster. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we're talking about. See what I mean? But you need something to sort of leverage against. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's just tons of them out there, huh? Just pull up the rock. Just on the rocks, yeah. You just gotta go. You got in certain areas. Some areas there isn't, other areas there is. So, like, around that corner there is where there's heaps. Try this for that bad boy out of there. Yeah, I never ate oysters until I was an adult. There you go, look at that. Wow. Just to be honest, they don't look appetizing. Yeah, and yet you look at think about what they're worth in a, in a restaurant or exactly anything like that. Yeah, I did, I actually did the garlic butter and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh they are so good. Um, Any fish out here eat these? Everything, yeah, if they can get into them. So, uh, the snapper will, more than anything, if they can get into them. Uh -huh. so, Alright, that was going to be a pain. <laughs> that doesn't look horrible. 
Oh my god, yeah. This smells unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Ooh, beef tongue, broccolini, a little mashed potatoes. Cheek food. Can't go wrong. Cheek food. I need to get us the one around this goss off gus reaping out. Thank you, bro. Honestly, like, the Zabi, as much as I love Aaron and stuff, they, they do an amazing job of catering all these meals, so beef cheeks. I've had these like four or five times in my life and they are delicious. They're good? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Honestly. Look at that. Honestly, and they fall apart. I don't even have a fork in it, but I could eat, literally eat that with my little finger. I could just like... So this spatula was born in a part. Yeah. Zero effort. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I can't it's wait amazing. to try it. They literally cook amazing food. I you. can't try I can't wait yeah, to try it. We caught some fish, good eats, good drinks, beautiful scenery. Day well spent. Can't beat it. Oh my gosh. It's not often I'm on a boat and don't eat fish, but I'm still happy about it. This is amazing, man. Look at this. Look at this. Did you say red as last time? Red wine to go with the meal. You know you're on a, you know you're getting fancy. Red wine. Yeah. Can we put some music on? <laughs> Red wine to go with the beef cheeks. Crazy. All the improvements just since last year, man. Just since last year, I feel like it's picked up five notches. I need some more cheeks. What are we? I'm just teasing. Your son's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good point, good point. We don't believe it. Because you know, Hardy's very, very different. But we love it. This is very different. We love him a lot. Welcome to the Mokohinao Islands. Coming up next episode, we are finally heading to the Mokohinao Islands with calmer forecasts on the horizon. One of the incredible places in New Zealand. Uh, as you'll discover as you move around, the water is unbelievably clear. This is one of the most epic places I've ever fished. And while the scenery is unparalleled, we've come here for the insane fishing. Yeah, some of those are pretty big, bro. <laughs> And this is a decent fish. Man, it's a football field of bait right there. Popped our air bladder, which isn't ideal. Better to have a descending device, but of course I don't have one with me, so we're just gonna keep this gal. She will not go to waste. We always need fish to eat. Um, she's, oh, there's she going. She went down. Just needed a little tickle, a little slap and tickle woke her up. Usually does. And on this boat there was a Marty. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah, it's <laughs> Good morning everyone. Marty's wearing Jared's pants. <laughs> Actually no, he's not wearing any pants now. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's about the same really. Yep. Hey, yeah, no. Those, those underwear are at least as long as those shorts. <laughs> do they make those pants for men? What do we what do we have to go with the ass cheeks? <sighs> what pairs hey, well with ass cheeks? <laughs> Lube. Uh, Lube. <laughs> Aaron. Nah, you're a legend, bro. Aaron, will you be my dad? Hi, <laughs> Brenda. Brenda would love you, man. Mom, you're gonna love it.